Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Valentina. If you're here for the first time, please don't forget to subscribe if you like my videos. So for today's video, I had a completely different idea. Uh, I had in my planner that today I should record a video of money mistakes to avoid in your 20s based on my experience. I'm already 27. So I was like, well, it's a good video to make. So I thought, why not? The thing is that we're in quarantine and today I woke up feeling terrible. It was just one of those days when you feel sad that you just want to cry and stay in bed all morning. But honestly, recording always puts me in a better mood. And I also had to record a video for my um, Spanish channel. So I was like, okay, just sit there, talk in front of the camera, do this, you can do it, like you're gonna be fine. But honestly, I'm not fine. And so I thought maybe it was a good idea not to sit here and cry because that's not what I'm gonna do today you'll see me cry, I cry a lot, but not today, that's not the case for today, I'm trying to stay positive. I don't even know yet what the title for this video is gonna be, I just know I wanted to talk of how am I actually feeling during the quarantine and how it is so far to be in quarantine in Venezuela and like how my plans change drastically because of this and also how to stay positive because I feel like considering the situation and like personal things that had happened to me, I feel like I'm handling it pretty well. So, as I said, this is a video I had not planned at all. So let's start with how are things in Venezuela right now, because it seems like officially, at least the official numbers they're giving out, we're doing pretty well. We don't have as many cases. I think we're close to 300 right now. I'm not really following the actual numbers every day because it really stresses me out and it really gives me anxiety. So I rather stay away from just numbers because like they're numbers, there's nothing I can do about them. So I rather just for my own mental health to stay away from that. So I don't really know the exact number. I just know we're not even close to a thousand yet, which is weird because I feel like a lot of people here are not staying home. A lot of them because they can't, because they truly, truly can't, because there are a lot of people here that live day by day. I don't know if that's an expression in English or not, but they live, if they don't work today, they don't eat tomorrow, period. And even if they work, like things and prices are so crazy here that a lot of people can't eat two or three times a day. So it is a really sad situation and I know I am really lucky and I'm really grateful that my job allows me to eat three times a day. It's not like I can go out and be like, have a super expensive life because I, I honestly can't, but I am able to eat and I'm able to help my mom and that's more than enough for me and I feel really lucky about that. So the thing is there are a lot of people that have to go out and have to go to work besides doctors and all this stuff but also we don't have gas right now. There's literally no gas to put in your car so you can't move because there's no way to do it so it's just getting really complicated. There's also a lot of political and economical situations that come from before all this happened. If you wanna read more about that, please go to Google and read about it. I'm not here to talk about politics because I hate them. When you grow up in a country where everything that you hear about is politics, even everything I had to write about in college because I studied journalism, is it's just insane and I got mentally tired of all of it. So anyways, there are a lot of other things happening that are affecting us as a society right now. Honestly, I don't know why there are not more cases yet, probably because we only had a few flights like maybe to Colombia, Panama and Spain during the week but my country like we didn't have many airlines we, so many people in my country can't travel so that really helped us not get the virus as fast which is not something good it's good we don't have the virus it's not good that we're not able to travel I think that's the worst part just knowing that people can't stay home. Like I can, my neighbors can, my family can, some of my family can, but there are a lot of people that just can't stay home. And it's really hard because you can't force them to because they either it's like, okay, I'll get the virus or I won't eat. So they have to go out and just risk themselves, which is really sad because that's caused by the country situation. And then everything's really expensive, but again, different topic. The thing is, I've 
been staying home since March 14th. For almost a month, I didn't leave the apartment at all. We've been getting food delivered because my mom is uh, over 65 and she had cancer. So we are really trying to protect especially her and protect others out there. I don't want to put anyone at risk, but I've been out, I think, three to four three or four times it is crazy how yes people are so some people are wearing the mask but a lot of them like so i went to a dentist appointment and the dentist they were like so protected and like so careful and so hygienic but then i was in the waiting area and there were two people like two guys that would hang their mask on their ear just like not put it, just like they would hang like on this side and they would ask me like, don't your ears hurt from like having the mask on? And I was like, yes, it, it is super uncomfortable, but like you have to do it. People are so selfish and like if you're out there, just put on the stupid mask. I've seen a lot of people like that. Yes, you have the mask on, but then there are a lot of people that won't respect like actual social distancing and like people get really together and it's just hard one day i was in the supermarket and this guy was like hey he needed to grab something and i was in the line to pay and he would just like get on top of me to grab something and talk and i was like just at least stay quiet if you're gonna be on top of me just like shut your mouth don't say anything let's keep everyone here safe so i just think it's cultural and not just here at all it's not like oh this is venezuela no this is all over the world there are a lot of people that are not conscious of what's happening and they would just go out there and risk other people's lives because i get bored at home that's not an excuse to get out i get bored at home too and i've been staying home like i went to the supermarket once because they won't deliver meat and we needed meat. And then another time I went to the dentist because it was kind of an emergency. And then I went to the dermatologist, which is also like, she told me like, you have to come. And I was like, well, okay. And the hospital was like super, super safe. They would really, they would give you mask if you didn't have one. They were all wearing like this screens, like plastic screens. And they would put um, alcohol in your hands or like hand sanitizer, I'm not sure what it was. But they did it like three times before I got to the actual uh, doctor's office. The thing is, we don't have in general in Venezuela, we don't have the resources to be prepared for something like this. That's why I'm really glad it's just a few cases at this point. But people keep saying it's gonna get bad and that really freaks me out. I don't think we can handle it, not just because the health system is not the best, but also because with food, so with no gas, it's harder to get food. It is just harder with the prices. It is harder to actually buy food. Like most people can't buy everything they need. And to give you guys an example, I'm spending here just for myself. Let's, I pay for my mom's food or most of it, but just on my own food, I'm spending like double of what I was spending in LA, which is insane to me because LA is one of the most expensive cities in the world. And I'm just spending more money here on basic things. It's not like I'm getting caviar or like, I don't know, really expensive stuff. I'm getting bread, I'm getting pasta, I'm getting my arepa flour. We're eating really basic stuff. Lots of vegetables, so much more expensive than what it should. And it's a mix of the economy right now, the thing that we don't have gas to like move food all over the country. So it really scares me. So this morning, so the whole point of, of this video was to give you a little intro of how everything's looking like in Venezuela right now. I can't give more details. I haven't got out of my zone, like my little city, let's say. So I've been trying to stay just in my area if I have to go out to, again, keep myself safe, keep my mom safe, and keep everyone else around me safe. So today, just woke up a little frustrated and thinking about how, so not counting people that have to go out to work because they have no other option. I'm talking about people who are like, I need to go out because I hate staying in. I, I get bored. I have nothing to do. Girl, like I live in an apartment that gets no sun any time of the day, just for like 30 minutes in the kitchen near to the trash can. That's all the sun I get. <laughs> I have the 
most annoying neighbors upstairs that move furniture at 5 a.m. I like, yes, I'm lucky because I'm safe, because I have a place to stay and because I have food. And I know that. But there's people that are just like me. You have food, you have health, you have everything you need. Maybe like, yeah, we don't have, I don't have a balcony. I don't have a garden. Like it's fine because this is what I have to do right now. So I just don't get it for people that would just go out there and just make the situation worse for no reason. Those are the ones that really frustrate me. And that's what I was thinking about today when I woke up and like, it frustrates me that for people like that, we have to stay longer at home. I think just my message here is like, if you're one of those people, please don't. I know this is really annoying. I know this is not fun for anyone. This really changed my plan. I was planning to see my boyfriend in May. So around this date, um, because we've been long distance for eight months and I miss him so much and I really want to be with him. And I don't know how much longer this is gonna last. And this is not easy at all. And it's not good for a relationship because it's like, it's taking a lot longer than we thought. But what I'm saying is this changed my plans drastically, not just about that trip, but like other stuff. I don't know when like borders are gonna open. We have no way to get out of Venezuela. I know like it's very difficult to travel everywhere, but here there's no way to get in or to get out. So that really freaks me out because if something happens here, which could at any moment and not because of the coronavirus, it really freaks me out. How do you get out if there's an emergency? How do I get out if something happens and I have to see my family in, in the US? Like there's no way. And that gives me really, really bad anxiety. Again, I know I'm lucky. Um, but again, I know this has effects all of us in a different way. So what I'm asking for is like, if you don't have to go out, don't do it. Don't be selfish. Don't be like, oh, I don't care because I'm young and I won't get sick. Like we have to stop this because obviously a vaccine is not coming anytime soon. I don't know. I'm just, I'm so frustrated and I'm so frustrated about this type of people. Again, the ones that don't have to go outside and still do it because they're bored. Again, I've been trying not to watch the news, not to read any article. And I know you have to stay informed, but I've realized that for my own mental health, I cannot read as many news because there's nothing I can do about it besides what I'm already doing. I know what's happening out there, but I don't want the details just to protect myself because I'm someone that gets stuck into my own thoughts and like thinks about the same things over and over. And that's what happened to me this morning. I just woke up like, I wanna cry, this is horrible. I'm never gonna get to see my boyfriend again. I'm never gonna get to see my sister or my brother again. And that um, takes me to my next point, which is how to stay positive or things I've been doing to stay positive. So it's really weird. I am really anxious when I think about it though. So that's the thing, this morning I read Twitter and that was the mistake because that got me really, really, really anxious. But when I'm not reading Twitter and when I'm not like reading news over and over again and looking at the numbers, I think I've been handling this pretty well. I only have like bad days maybe every other week, like one day every other week, which I think is really good for myself for what I was expecting this to be like. So I wanted to share what I've been doing to really stay positive. I consider myself a pretty positive person, not as positive as my mom, you don't know her, but she's like the most positive person on earth. Uh, but besides that, like, I consider myself a pretty positive person and I think I'm being really positive in this situation considering everything that's happening. First, I obviously, as I said, I haven't been reading the news as often. It's something I highly recommend if you're an anxious person, if you get stressed really easily, if you wanna be informed every single day of everything that's happening, just take maybe 30 minutes to read as much as you can and stay informed, but don't do it every single hour because it's not healthy for yourself. Then the second thing I've been trying to stay really, really, really busy, which I've been actually more than I should. I work um, eight hours a day. I also have my Spanish YouTube channel, which consumes a lot of time. I now have this new channel, just launched my website. It's in Spanish so far, so I can, like, I can share it here. I'll leave it in the 
uh, description box, but it's all in Spanish. There are some uh, free downloadables in Spanish if you want to practice. There are some journaling prompts and stuff you can download to make your life prettier and easier. I've been reading a lot, which also helps. I've been journaling, I've been meditating, I've been trying to work out, which I truly, truly hate, but I've been forcing myself to do so because it makes me feel better after I finish. It's like, okay, like I feel, my body feels so much better. And I think we're lucky to have Netflix and um, I don't know, all this technology to keep ourselves entertained and most important to stay in contact with the people we love. That's something else I've been doing. So I'm currently staying with my mom and she's great to talk to and I, I love her. And we talk a lot with my dad on the phone. We spend literally like six to seven hours a day on the phone with him. Mostly my mom because I, I work. Yeah, but it's a lot of time with him on the phone. He lives in Caracas too. So he's pretty close to us and, but we haven't seen him because social distancing friends and so yeah like talking to my mom sometimes calms me down but talking to my friends on skype or facetiming or whatever or zoom talking to my boyfriend really really calms me down i feel like just his voice like he can say whatever and i'm just like okay and uh, it really helps. So just talk to someone that makes me that makes you feel calm. And honestly, just communicate with yourself. Like try to use this time to connect with yourself, to understand your feelings. If you're feeling sad, cry. But like try to understand what's happening and why those feelings are there. Yeah, I feel like those are the main things that have been helping me to go through all of this. It's been a roller coaster of emotions and I know we're kind of all in this together, but at the same time, our personal problems are the ones that are affecting us the most. So, and what scares us the most, all this uncertainty is just harder for some of us. And if you're one of those people, again, these tips have been helping me to really stay positive. So yeah. Um, that's my trying to vent a little bit here plus like sharing how I'm actually feeling right now because in social media especially in my Spanish channel I'm always like super positive super happy which is who I truly am a lot of the time but also I have not so happy moments and I I break down and it's just completely normal I have better days and I have worse days like today but this will pass someday just don't know when. I hope you're all staying safe, that you're all keeping everyone around you safe. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.